Hey, this is uh, this is uh, part two of my last video. Um, anyone looking for help, um, for support um, with pain uh, and and more, I'm willing to try to help you to train you. Um, I have what it takes to do so, and I just wanted to add this part here. So it doesn't matter where you are in your journey. It doesn't matter if you're right at the beginning. You don't know what's happening in your life. You have so much pain. You don't know what's happening. You don't know what your diagnosis is. Your pain is really bad. It doesn't matter. I believe I can help you on your journey. And uh, whether it be actually trying to find your diagnosis I can't make diagnosis, but I can I can definitely help you along that journey. Um, if you just need support, you want to know about foods you can eat, medications. I'm not I can't I like I won't um, recommend medications, but I will talk about them with you. And so I bring about 20 I bring over 20 years of knowledge to the table um, of both reading. Uh, you know, the psychological state of pain, my own experiences. I have four pain suicide diseases and uh, 12 pain disorders in total. So I know what suffering is like. So I'm just going to read this. A new start. I've decided to make another video to show you uh, where, can I, where I can assist you in getting back to where you need to be despite the pain you're going through. These are just the... Um, the basics because you could be in a hundred and one different situations you could be in a million different situations so let's just go across some like let's just say you just got a new pain disorder let's just say you um, you fell down you hurt yourself all of a sudden you have chronic regional pain syndrome like in your spine like in your leg your foot doesn't matter what it is just giving you uh, an example um, if you're like me and let's face it most people are like this when uh, pain first strikes what the hell is happening and, and what's the cause so you have to be very careful at the beginning you have to start recording things because if you get too many too much input too many things happening medications building on top of each other you can get lost very easily and forget what you even happened what even started two memories come to mind um, this is my story I told you in my previous video I was having convulsions from an adverse reaction uh, from a medication and severe pain started excuse me in my cervical neck so it started right at the top um, right at the back and it hurt so much spread into my face and um, this was a kind of different pain than you get in other parts of your body I was confused agitated because it was like acute you ever had suction sinusitis it was like that but acute and uh, and it wouldn't stop it went on for weeks and weeks and weeks and uh, when it's in your face, everything stops. It wasn't like trigeminal neuralgia. This covered the ent entire bone structure of my face. It felt like my face was being crushed, so I couldn't think. Um, and at some points, so you can just hold on. So think of that beginning. That's just the first thing that you ever, you're, you know, you go about your normal life, and then all of a sudden you have this. Um, I remember uh, when it spread generally over my body, so it went to my face, to my whole body. I remember um, my brother and my dad and myself were working on a, a project in the backyard and uh, it had to do with a lot of digging and uh, stonework. And uh, and I just, I, I remember looking at them, I'm like, like this, this is my whole body was on fire I just didn't understand it 
and I knew I had to stop and they could see it on my face and I was overwhelmed. First I would have loved to know what it was. The hardest thing when intractable pain begins is finding out the cause and how to treat it. Sounds easy? It isn't. Hey, for some people it is, right? And um, you know, good for them. <laughs> kind of jealous, right? But actually, I get to that spot where I'm jealous because you know it's you deserve a diagnosis, right? Um, number one, you don't want to jump in. You don't want to jump into new medications without knowing the consequences, their addictions, their side effects, and uh, because you can make it a lot worse. In cases of acute chronic pain, it's hard to avoid opiates. What is it? What am I dealing with? How can I be treated for it? And who's the right pain specialist to go to? So that's another thing. You don't want to be thrown in the wrong direction. Because uh, there's a whole... There are different uh, pain specialists. And, uh, you know, you also want to find a good one. Because finding a good, finding a good physician, period, uh, can make the difference in your life. It really can. If you don't have these, you can end up in a heap of trouble and misery. Pardon me, I'm going to take a sip of water here. And nothing will ever be perfect. But thank God we live uh, in a time uh, with knowledge at our fingertips. But I'm sure you all, you know, I'm sure you know that that can lead to undesirable outcomes. And that does include myself. Uh, I had to not personally navigate on my own a maze, if not hundreds of separate symptoms and signs because I went so long with one disorder after the next, after the next building. And uh, I was dealing with hundreds of symptoms and I had to differentiate them. And that's why, that's another reason why I, I can help you with this because I've had to navigate the hardest things that you can imagine to try to get each separate diagnosis. Many disorders are alike, and uh, that goes for, you know, neurological pain and muscle pain, rheumatism, you know, uh, rheumatism and uh, neurological diseases. Many things look alike, and there, there's man, many mimics. So you have to try to find the uncommon, the uncommon things in them, you know, that that differentiate them. Uh, for me. Uh, adhesive arachnoiditis, and it was a problem uh, before my diagnosis, uh, appeared like MS, and it does because they have the same symptoms. Lyme's disease can appear like fibromyalgia and so forth. It's a confusing road. To be honest, I felt jealous of others getting a diagnosis. I would go into um, pain clinics. I was in a lot of pain clinics. I was in maybe four different pain clinics, maybe even more of them. Um, and uh, you know, you see people coming in and out while you're waiting in the waiting room, or while you're being treated with like ketamine or something like that. Uh, I used to get ketamine treatments, and you know, it was hard to watch people, and uh, they knew what they were dealing with. And here I was with, with like almost a dozen, and I didn't have a name to like ten of them. Being responsible and research. So I, I've been there, okay? I've been there. I've, I've felt like the hypochondriac. And uh, so I've been there, so I know. I understand. Being responsible and researching medications with a specialist is important, as well as discussing treatment options like a, a specified specialist, depending on what body part it is. Um, type of pain and severity. 
you're going to have to develop a line of defense to help you cope with a new lifestyle. So I'm just giving you the basics here. When a pain disease of any type begins, you're, go you're going to, um, your life is going to change whether you like it or not. And if you're smart about it, setting up success from day one can help you avoid dealing with a mountain of confusion. Another important aspect of a new pain disorder is acceptance. Okay, so adhesive arachnoiditis, I remember reading their uh, survival guidelines and it said you're going to have to accept this because this is equivalent to terminal cancer pain, uh, you know, when it's, when it's at its worst, which it almost always is. You have to accept that, okay? It's important to do that in the beginning. If it's intractable pain, you'll have to accept that reality. When I finally received my diagnosis of AA, I remember I remembered feeling sick to my stomach because, not because of the pain, but because I had to accept that my spine was inflamed. And uh, not just that, but it was permanently scarred in that it's uh, a progressive scarring. So I haven't seen my spine MRI for since I got my diagnosis. So 22, 23, 24, it could look a lot different now. But I do my best to try to live a life with little inflammation. Um, you're going to have to accept that you'll experience both good and bad days. If it's 9 or 10 pain, you need to learn to take what you can in those moments. So if you live constantly or 9 or 10 pain every single day, terminal cancer, very severe uh, nerve pain, then uh, you know, you're know you going to have to accept you have good days and bad days. And that goes for neurological diseases too, especially the ones that are progressive. In the beginning, I had a whole lot of um, pain physician appointments. And I had to go on a constant basis because of my pain. Thankfully, now there's Zoom or other means. I've learned many lessons, and because of the pandemic, a lot of doctors went just straight to the phone or Zoom. I've learned many lessons, uh, but too late. And that's why I'm sharing this with you. In, uh, in my case, with full body RSD, um, I was consumed all day and night, um, and only opiates were the effective medications, but when I say that, they were only partially. They definitely were not the answer. Um, they always quit on me because I wasn't, I wasn't um, em imploring the right the right methods to make the best to try to potentiate and keep it working you know why they uh, quit because I did so I didn't implement the right strategies to make the most of those doses you can't just sit around take one and then because you know you have intractable pain all you want to do is um, you just want to stay still and then you wait for your next pain dose. Uh, I'm not saying everyone, but certainly at one point I was like that, and I know people are like that. That's why I said in the last video that hygiene is an issue with severe intractable pain. Um, you have to learn what to do when those pain doses wear off. For me, I thought uh, the way they worked was taking one after the other, but I wasn't doing the work for the rest of um, my life, like proper exercise, diet, sleep, and exercise. If you learn how to do those things and do it on a constant basis, you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. If only I knew what my disorder was from day one, but that's not the way it was. That's why I'm speaking to you on here right now. If I could give you one message, I would tell you to be responsible now. If you aren't, you might find yourself in a hole that you can't dig yourself out of alone. Getting help isn't always necessary, but it's a smart idea if you're not doing well. Please know that aside from what I'm already offering, I can help you investigate your diagnosis 
uh, but I'm not a physician. I'll definitely, you know, speak to you with the, about that. I can lend a hand that way if you are overwhelmed. Diagnostics can be a hard process because you need to find the origin. What happened? Could it be psychological in nature or both? It's important to be truthful to yourself from the start. With me, sorry, breathless. I have autism. I also have mental health conditions. and uh, But I knew full well that my pain did not begin because of a psychological cause. I took a medication. I had a very serious events, events uh, but still I was afraid because I had a background and felt like it, it that it might be um, that I might be treated unfairly and most certainly I was so I'll make another video pertaining to this and it will be what you would do after the basics right and uh, yeah so I offer uh, training or support 30 minutes or 50 minutes um, if you'd like to know um, how much it is, contact me, please. And uh, and if that interests you, then uh, then please contact me. Thank you for watching today. God bless. Hope you're whatever it is you're suffering with. Whatever it is you're suffering with, I can help you. And uh, and God bless.